Hello everyone, welcome back to Look Past Limits and to the final episode of the Van Build. So if you've been watching along, you'll know the series. If you haven't and you're new here, you can click the playlist, which is somewhere up here now. Over the last few weeks, we've been turning this van into a camper van. We set ourselves a challenge to build this van out in 30 days or less. At the beginning, we thought that was going to be a really big challenge. And in the end, we've done it. We did it. Finished van. We've done it. It's finished. Only 19 days. We have actually built this whole van in 19 days. So we'll start by taking a quick look at the outside. It's a 2014 Movano. That's a Vauxhall Movano in the UK and an Opel Movano here in Europe. It's the same if you're watching from the States as a Promaster or a Sprinter, all these vans are much the same. It's an L2H2, which is the same as a medium wheelbase. We didn't want to go with the full length, so it's a more compact build and you'll see inside why. And on the outside, we've pretty much left it the same. We've gave it a good machine polish. We've painted the wheels. We've added some stripes on the side there and on the back and we've added two windows. One on this side that you can see is fixed and on the other side the same size window but you can open it. You'll see that from the inside. And then I guess the other major thing on the outside would be the solar panel on the roof. We've got a huge 300 watt solar panel which takes up the majority of the roof and then a roof light at the back behind that which again you'll see from the inside. So let's come and have a look inside now. So here it is, we tried to go for a really spacious looking layout, we didn't want any full height stand up cubicle for a shower so we just kept it open um, and we chose the wood on the walls just for a nice cozy feeling and a homely look and we wanted a really big bed which I think we achieved and we have this L shaped spacious kitchen here as well. So I think we fitted everything in what we wanted and kept it looking nice and open. So one of the major initial design factors was whether we keep the bulkhead or not. In the end we decided to keep it, which has left us with this L-shaped kitchen design. Uh, the reasons for keeping the bulkhead were basically that we liked the idea of separating the living space and the driving space. It also makes it feel more safe when you're driving, that you don't have everything behind you. And it keeps the noise down when you're driving as well. If you don't have the bulkhead, you hear everything in the back rattling about a lot when you're driving. So it's kept it nice and quiet in the front there. So we built a custom L-shaped kitchen. We used framing wood and we used, uh, we bought doors just for a nicer look and finish because we like this black look. Uh, and then on the worktop, we just used wood and lacquered it to make it waterproof. Uh, at the back, we've got a splash bag with stick-on tiles. It's just the easiest and lightweight, good looking, we think, uh, option for a splash bag. Uh, and then, as you can see, we've got a two burner stove. We have a gas bottle linked to it underneath here in a sealed locker. It's a 10 kilo propane bottle. You can see it in there. Right next to it, we've got a good size sink. It's a household sink and a household tap. Uh, and we've got a really basic water system, but we actually have a running water. We've got a 12 volt pump, what brings the water up. And we've got a 50 liter container down in the corner, which you can fill from, other, from outside of the van. You just put the hose in from the outside and it fills it. And then we've got a basic um, grey water disposal tank here for the sink. And this cabinet is just storage space. And then on this side we've got a good space for chopping, just a good worktop space. We've got a drawer for some storage and under here we've got a 49 liter compressor fridge which is pretty spacious you can 
get everything you need in there and it's run from the solar as we talked at the beginning the this window here opens it will give us good ventilation for cooking and above here above the kitchen we have some more storage space as well for some food and maybe along here we'll store our clothes um yeah plenty space up there as well so moving back we've got this huge l-shaped seating area what turns into a bed at night we used the same framing wood to make the frame of the bed and then we used cladding the same as what we've got on the walls for the tops uh, the cheapest option for us was to buy a normal foam mattress and cut it into pieces and then we just covered it with this black material so underneath the bed there is storage space under all of it you can access it from here just lifting up hinged bits on the top of the bed uh, or you can access it from the back underneath here we've got a toilet It just pulls out from underneath here I'm sure you've seen one of those before it just operates like another like a chemical toilet what you can find in a caravan you put the chemicals inside and then just use it as normal uh, we didn't want to build in toilet so this was the easiest option so during the day we have a lot of seating space here uh, and then at night we take this table down just removing the table leg and drop this piece down in between here there's another piece what goes in here and then we just drop down the cushions and make a full-size bed across this whole area uh, and then when you're sleeping at night you can also open the roof vent which we've got here and the sliding window which I've already showed you for some airflow and under here we have a lot of storage under the bed accessible from the back doors and when the bed's made up you can sleep lengthways and it's a size of a king size bed so under this side of the bed we've got the electric set up uh, and the main part of that is a 190 amp hour 12 volt battery <laughs> Uh, that's powered by a 300 watt solar panel that's on the roof so the power comes from the solar panel down through this charge controller here and through these fuses and into the battery here we've got the 12 volt fuse box with a main fuse as well and a battery switch to isolate it all and on this side we've got the fuses for the 230 volt system which is the main system and a charger for that system as well uh, down here is just a socket for the 230 volt charger, a dimmer switch for the lights that are under here and below there what you can see is the diesel heater. So it's a pretty simple electrical system but it's got everything that we need. In terms of charging we've got a USB, a normal USB and two USB-C power delivery sockets here so we can charge the phones and laptop and drone and everything that we need from here. We've got a voltmeter here these are the three light switches for the three sets of lights which are the lights that we've got on the roof the lights underneath the overhead lockers here and the other ones that come round the floor here we've also got a 12 volt cigarette lighter socket charger here as well this switch is for the water pump system when we are hooked up onto mains electricity which we have a hookup point on the outside of the van for we can then plug normal household sockets into here and then this is the control for the diesel heater system we've also got the same sockets as this over on the back there uh, again for charging phones or laptops or anything from that side of the seating area and so that's pretty much it which has also meant that we've kept the wiring to a minimum the wiring is basically all coming from here going to either there or there and one run up to some lights and one run of solar cables down which saves running wires all over the van the other things that run off the electrics would be the uh, fridge, as Vendy said earlier, it's a 12 volt fridge um, which can run all the time purely off this battery and the solar and the water pump for the 12 volt. And that's about it for the electrics. 
and it's difficult to think about the heating system today because we're absolutely sweating in this 30 degree heat but we do for the winter have the diesel heating system and that is just the normal Chinese diesel heater that everyone's using in the vans these days. Uh, I guess another thing that we maybe never spoke about because Wendy was doing the interior tour here is that I mentioned earlier it was a H2 van and I can stand up fully in here. I'm six foot two or 187 centimeters and with insulation in the floor and the roof I can still fully stand up in here for anyone who's wondering about height and we also talking about the insulation in the floor and the roof never spoke about the insulation uh, we have natural sheep wool insulation in the walls and the doors and everywhere round about here and in the floor and the ceiling we have a foam board we'll pop a link up here for the insulation video and you can watch that so we hope that our van building series and our van tour will inspire some of you guys to, for your own builds. And yeah, thanks very much for watching this video and thanks very much for watching the whole series if you have been. If there's anything at all that you've missed or that we haven't covered, then just please do ask in the comments below. And thanks very much for watching. We'll see you in the next series. Cheers guys. <laughs>